In this video, we're going to be unboxing the Brunner CSLE Force Feedback Joystick. And as you guys know, for me, there's nothing more exciting than force feedback and maybe tea and biscuits. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm super hyped <laughs> to, be, to be unboxing this. So let's get going. Welcome back to the Gaming Muscle YouTube channel. Click that like button and subscribe if you enjoy simulator content. So here it is in the box from Switzerland, the joystick with force feedback. Uh, if you've been following Flight Sims, uh, it's been a long time since there's been force feedback joysticks on the market and there still aren't mass force feedback options. Uh, all due to a patent troll, I believe, that's basically removed the joy of force feedback from, the, from Flight Sims. Needless to say, I am really excited to take a look at this. We had to uh, import it from Switzerland and uh, that cost a fair bit of money. I'll put the pricing in the comment section and uh, in the, in the, in the uh, description box so you can, uh, you can cry for me. Uh, but uh, yes, here we go. Let's get it unboxed, guys. Let's see what you actually get in there. Let's keep nattering about the joy of force feedback joysticks. So it comes in a, this really simple brown box. Uh, the reason being that it's not really like a, it's not really a mass consumer device. Brunner typically do uh, controllers for industry, you know, and it's very much in line with those kind of that kind of OSW direct drive motor situation, uh, where it's they basically build these per order. They're, they're not like a you know they don't have like fifty of them in a warehouse. And uh, so we've got the we've got the actual unit out there. We've got a USB cable, we've got a Euro to UK plug, and uh, that is it. That's what you get in the box. And I have to say, uh, looks really nice and solid. And nicely, it's got the uh, you've got the holes on top here, which should make it nice and easy for mounting. Uh, to our uh, similar P1X cockpit. I'm looking to mount this on the side. We've got a PU leather top on it to stop dust getting into the, uh, the, motor, the motor mechanism and the controller board. And we've got the actual socket for the joystick. Uh, you might be asking yourself, hang on a minute, how are you supposed to use this? There's no actual stick on it. Well, you uh, get around that by using either the uh, HOTAS uh, Warthog replica joystick uh, from Thrustmaster. When Thrustmaster actually do another replica, I can't remember which plane it is, they do another one of these which has the same socket on it. Or you can use uh, like a Verpil uh, joystick and actually Verpil, do, uh, their joysticks look amazing, they're, they're flight sticks. I really want to get one but they're all out of stock. So, uh, But yeah, you can use the HOTAS joystick and attach it onto that. It's basically the, the uh, Thrustmaster attachment on there. It's now the standard for joystick connections purely by uh, the chance that Thrustmaster were early to the market with this, I think. So uh, we will attach that in a minute. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the powering of this, it uses a 300 watt AC to DC converter and uh, it will just, pl just plug straight in, obviously using the socket to make it work with our plugs. Um, and that's, that's it really, the, the controller is built into it as I say, so there's not that much in terms of cabling that will be all over the place in complexity. Um, nice, a nice tidy unit, pretty heavy, I think it's uh, three and a half kilograms without the joystick and the jo you know this uh, joystick's another kilogram or so, so nice nice chunk to it. Um, let's, I tell you what, I'm going to give it a little, f I'm going to give it a little touch here. Don't want to really move it around too much with it not plugged in, but yeah, no, that's really nice. You can, you can feel the cogging of the motors in there. But it is pretty smooth, and that's with it powered off. With with these, uh, with any like force feedback device, when you power it on, it normally smooths it out because there's some magic you can do with the uh, controller board. Um, good, really good, nice range to that actually. Surprisingly good range to it. Um, yeah, now this is going to be. <laughs> I'm I'm optimistic here. Without power, this actually feels quite nice, uh, and that range actually surprises me. Uh, when it is powered up, it has 4.5 newton meters. Uh, on each axis, axis of uh, peak torque. I don't know what the sustained torque on this uh, CSLE joystick is. I don't think anyone's actually measured that. 
uh, but you know, because it's not got a, a, a it's not like a wheel where you where you're say um, say it's a 300 mil wheel rim, you're 115 mil out half the wheel rim width out in terms of torque arm. You're, you're literally holding onto the joystick. So a four newton meters in, on a joystick would be the equivalent of like eight newton meters of what you would feel at your hand on a, on a steering wheel. So it should be more than enough. Um, let's attach this on. I'm going to have to be really careful here because if you attach it the wrong way. Um, the pins get pushed down. Could end up being a very expensive mistake if you uh, get it the wrong way around. But you, should, you could probably just uh, remove the pins and you'll be all right. There we go. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, guys. So immediately you can't feel the cogging of the motors. Ah, oh, they, that's, this is gonna be so good when this is plugged in. This is gonna feel so good. It, right, even without a spring, you know, that has the potential to be fantastic. Just, there's no there's no uh, stiction on it at all for input. So one of the big problems I have with the uh, A10 Warthog joystick, uh, the actual, what the Thrustmaster A10, bait, the actual controller that st this stick normally plugs into, it has loads of stiction to it. And it also has like a, a, a sort of, it returns to center and gets stuck there, which is, it, it makes it feel solid. It's got a resistance there, but it's, it's terrible for helicopter flying. And it, it just, it just doesn't, it's just annoying as an input device. I mean, you know, there'll be arguments as to what's realistic, but this, oh, guys, <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Oh, I can't wait to plug it in. This is just an unboxing, though. This is just an unboxing for now. The powering up of this is going to be a whole nother exciting ritual. But, I mean, that's it, guys. That's, that's pretty much uh, for this. It's a, it's a simple package, but sometimes a simple package is all you need. Uh... I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's like a child at Christmas. Uh, unfortunately, we had to sell Santa's sledge to get this, so no one else is getting any presents. But uh, look out for our future videos on this. And uh, there we go. Click that like button and subscribe. As I say, if you're into this kind of thing, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of, if there's any details of this uh, that you'd like specifically covered. Uh, I'm really looking to try this with, we'll, we'll be testing it with X-Plane 11 uh, and DCS, but uh, I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting this working with the new Microsoft Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Um, I don't know if support for that is confirmed yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it should, I would hope it would work. You know, um, you, you should be able to get the same kind of uh, telemetry data out there uh, for this software to latch onto and I'm, I'd, I'd imagine Brunner would really want to get it to work with that because uh, Microsoft Flight Sim is, is like for VFR flying is going to be the sim basically so yeah till the next one guys thank you for watching happy tea drinking goodbye <laughs>